the Oregon Ducks cruising right along, man. That was about as dominant of a first half as you could expect from a team. Yeah, I, Saturday afternoon. I'm watching that game. I was like, I, I again, I thought the Ducks would win handily. I didn't think they'd cover because that twenty was twenty five and it opened that. That's a massive number. And I'm sitting there going, okay, let's see how this game goes. Oregon does what they do offensively, and I'm like, okay, that's, that maybe a little bit more resistance from Illinois there. But then one play. One play was like, all right, I'm out. I'm out on this game. Illinois, they, they, they try to get the deep play. Altmaier throws the most ridiculous arm punt I've ever seen. It was like, what, what did you see here that made you think that, one, you should throw this, two, you should throw it there, three, use that throw to get it there? And I was like, if this is what they are going with, they have – no chance in this game, and it's already over. And then Oregon just responded and said, <laughs> "Watch this!" And then well, they just put the quite the smackdown on him. Pressure, man. It was incredible. Pressure, pressure did it to him. And I was heading into it. We knew Oregon had a speed advantage, and that was pretty clearly outlined leading into that game. Mm-hmm. Of Oregon had an advantage, athleticism wise. I was shocked, quite frankly the physicality that or lack thereof that Illinois had and on both sides of the ball. It was a game where you looked at, you know, Gabe Akis was a non-factor largely in that game. He had a sack, I believe. Yes. Um, one sack, one TFL. He was, he was a non-factor f- for most of that game. Up front on the interior of the offensive line, That was where Illinois was weak, guard to guard. I I think I said that about a billion times leading up to that game. Guard to guard, Illinois was not good. And Derek Carmen, Jamari Caldwell and company, hell, even Amarion Winston moving into the nose on the goal line made life hell for Illinois up front. And I think that that is where this Oregon team is so dangerous is when you are good in the middle of your defensive line and you are getting a pushback, guys like Luke Altmar, who is more athletic than he gets credit for, mm-hmm. um, they are forced to to be, roll out of the pocket and you're going to Tatum Tuioti. You're going to Mateo Uyunglele. Mm-hmm. You're going into, you know, Devin Jackson, who, who's you know, bending around and filling on the outside. There's not a speed advantage that you have, even with your athletic quarterback. That is, Oregon is playing at an insanely high level defensively. And on offense, the balance that they have shown, what are you going to, I mean, they put up 363 yards in the first half. They outgained Illinois 363 to 86 in the first half. Yeah, it was, it was not remotely close in, in, Oregon, obviously, they only scored three points after the half because they just buttoned it up and said, and I've seen some Oregon fans who are like, why aren't they pouring it on? Why aren't they? I think Lanning's doing the right thing. And just, hey, we've got this game put away, salt it, mm. move on to the next, get out of here healthy. And I, I, I think that they're doing the right thing. And I think Duck fan is maybe a little too spoiled or, or, or holding on to the Chip Kelly era of like, let's put hang 70 on somebody. It's like that's not how this works. When you're a, when you're a team at the very top, you're just once you've got a game taken care of, you just move on. You are already on to the next. Yeah, just it's a marathon. Business. It's not a sprint. Yeah, and I, I think that you know when, I mean when Gabriel is, he threw for what two hundred and forty three of his two ninety one in the first half. Yeah, uh, you're just saying all right, Back we're going to get out get out of here. I I do understand that there is a lot of Oregon fan that is I don't know. I don't know if the word is concerned with Dylan Gabriel throwing interceptions. He he does look if if you're talking about the highest level competition, he gets a, he gets out of it against Ohio State. But between now and Ohio State, again, now Will Johnson will test you this weekend. Don't mess around throwing with throwing near that guy. Mm-hmm. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it happen. You 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 float one near that man, it's gone. He's gonna take that thing to the house. Um, but Michigan's offense is so putrid. I don't think you're something you truly have to worry about kind of going forward, but 
Gabriel is flirting with like what he can and can't get away with in certain areas. And I guess if you're going to do it, do it in these situations and not against, you know, the cream of the crop. I have seen, and, and this is kind of what I would, in those games that have been tight and in the games that are of consequence, mm-hmm. have any of his interceptions been thrown in those? No. He had three low red area interceptions mm-hmm. in that back to back with UCLA, where Brian Addison jumps the route, Tez slips, he goes pick six. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tried to, same action, tried to get it to Tez, picked off. They, Michigan State baited him into it. Mm-hmm. He held onto the ball for far too long, got off of his first read, Zach Grace, way too late to try to find Herbert. Linebacker makes a really good play against Michigan State, and that was one where Dylan Gabriel said it after the game. He said, look, I sometimes I get a little greedy. I try to see if I can make that throw. He's trying to test what he can get away with. Mm-hmm. In these games, when he the Purdue game, it was what, 28 nothing. Yeah, I mean, at that he, point, he, again, if you're going to try it, like that... Sails it high, goes through his receiver's hands, gets intercepted, right? The Illinois one, ball was underthrown. He actually had a few... Un, if I was going to say the thing that I was like, huh, it was he underthrew three balls in that game. One got picked off. One was a touchdown to Justice Lowe, where he put... Justice Lowe had mm-hmm. two steps on the guy, still was a touchdown, but a little bit underthrown. He had to come back to the ball, gets tackled as he's going into the end zone. Right, there were a few balls that were underthrown. The interception, I am not overly concerned because if you're going to try to work on, all right, what can I do? Go ahead and do it when you're up big. That's where we've seen his interceptions, yeah. right? Or games that you feel like they they're not tight games. I look at the two games that were tight. He went 18 of 21 for 243 and two touchdowns, zero interceptions against Boise, mm-hmm. against Ohio State. 23 of 34, 341 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Plays a lot more safe then. If it, you're going to do it, try to get away with it in these games. In these games, yeah. And yeah. Uh, quick shout-out to uh, Noah Winnington because that safety is still picking his gear up at the goal line. He, Noah Whittington. He absolutely dump truck that man. The, good Lord. I feel... So good for a guy like Noah Whittington. <laughs> because I know you saw it on social media the, the week prior. It was, what is Noah Whittington doing getting all these carries? Why are they still leaning on Noah Whittington? He's still trying to get back from a major knee injury, mm-hmm. and it's taken him a long yeah. time. I think he might be back. He got his legs underneath him. We saw it at <laughs> Purdue in late, as the game went on. Mm-hmm. He got better, and he had some explosives. Against Illinois, you saw the that's what Noah Whittington was doing before mm-hmm. he got injured against Colorado. Lowering his shoulder, being a dual threat out of the backfield as a receiver, dump trucking dudes behind his pads. That that, dude, that was impressive. That DB, I can't remember his name, it, somebody did a freeze frame on him. He had both feet pointed up at the sky. Yeah. It was it was bad. It was just oh no. I mean, Noah Whittington channeling his inner Patrick Mahomes there. Yeah, it was, it was. It was like whoa. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. and it was a pop. It yeah, was no, loud. You, you could hear it on TV. Like it was like, oh, I haven't seen like you just. It feels like we don't get many of those. Yeah. In football anymore, where yeah. you, you used to get that one on one, like man on man, like who it, little Oklahoma drill, live action kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. But, oof. Tez Johnson Tough. had two plays that I went, oh my goodness, the touchdown mm-hmm. where. I don't know if this offensive line can block any better than they have recently. D- on that touchdown to Tez, Dylan Gabriel he had all day. He had, but he didn't. Have, he didn't even move. No, he, he just, just sat there and got bounced to in the drop pocket and stayed on his toes. And he went. He scanned the field mm-hmm. three complete times. He went left to right, right to left, and back. Left to right, <laughs> and Tez. Tez told me after the game in, in our post game interview, he said, "You know, in that." scramble drill when the guy's waiting that long you run your route everybody breaks the sideline mm-hmm. he goes i knew the middle of the field was going to be wide open <laughs> and when your quarterback's not scrambling go to the middle of the field where he can see you and so he went to the middle of the field and then that move he put on the safety was just Earth. goodness gracious nothing that guy could do that was play number one where i just went okay tez may be a little bit different the other one where 
it should have been picked that screen where he, Gabriel dumps it over the top oh, yeah. and Tez like does a pirouette one hand mm-hmm. catch and then he stays in bounds and goes up the sideline picks up the first down on it and shout to you that you did, unreal you called for Justice Lowe to to step up this week and he he I mean, so the, out to the touchdown, he was still impactful. Uh, he's going to play a lot of he's going to play a lot of downs for this team because of Justice Lowe is a high football IQ guy. Like he is, mm-hmm. he's very smart. But we even saw him in Trajan Holden is not just an elite talent catching the football. He's a great blocker. Justice Lowe is just as good. They ran him short motion inside, and they inserted him, and he went in between the guard tackle and rooted out a linebacker mm-hmm. in a run play. Like, you're doing that with a wide receiver. And so Justice Lowe, he got an inch, and he created some playing time for himself. Well, I know that last week we talked about how important it was for Oregon to get out and have a quick start in yeah. this game to try to exert their excellence. I got out of here at, I think it was 1235 mm-hmm. uh, on Saturday afternoon, and which and I don't think they kicked off until 1240. I, it was already 14 nothing when I made it home and pulled in my driveway. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They, they're they coming out. It's like a 22-minute drive. Teams. I think that is, is impressive. We had that, that second quarter lull against Purdue that everybody said. There's mm-hmm. a lull second quarter to third quarter. Um, and this goes back to Oregon kind of answering all the questions. Week by week, right? Week by week. What, what you put in front of them, they, Offen- they handle. Offensive line coming out of Idaho. The first half against Boise, they tried to fix it. The second half, they made that change, and we have seen a completely different offensive line unit since the second half of that Boise game. Then it was, all right, can the defense start stringing together not just good halves but complete games? We're starting to see that time and time again. You, This one was, all right, there was a quick start after an emotional win against Purdue. Can they get through that lull and not take their foot off the gas in the second quarter? They didn't. They scored on five of their first six drives. Okay, Salt put up it away early, man. Thirty-five points in the first half. Brett Bielema. That was the largest deficit Brett Bielema has ever had at halftime of a game. They were up thirty-five to three, right? They are answering all those questions week in and week out. Now it is: Can you take this on the road into a hostile environment? Michigan may not be the same team they were last year. There's going to be 110,000 people. It will be, there's going to be ramped up and geeked out for the number one team in the country to, to go to Michigan. Can you take this business trip on the road and perform like you have? Think of their road environment so far, Oregon state where there are a lot of duck fans and they took them out of that Mm -hmm. game pretty early. UCLA. Probably 60-40 UCLA to Oregon fans. Maybe closer to 50-50. Purdue, where most of the fans were there to see Oregon, not Purdue play. (laughs) Even the Purdue fans. Not a good environment on a Friday night. Those are the three road games that they have had to this point. They are truly going to a hostile environment against a physical team that is woefully one-dimensional on the offensive side of the ball. But can you string the performances that you've had together in front of what will be one of those crowds. It's going to be loud. They're going to be hostile. And it is an uptick in talent from what they have seen on the road to this point. That's going to be the next challenge for Oregon. Um, they've kind of answered every every question at this point. They're, they're deserved of the number one team in the nation, unless you're John Wilner, apparently. The only person in the AP Top 25 to not vote Oregon number one. Mm. John Wilner. I wonder if there's any potential reason for that. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Young guys also stepping up too. Sione Laulea gets an interception. Mm-hmm. Damn near gets another pick. Uh, Dink Riggs comes in, the freshman running back out Some of DC. Great names on this team, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, right. Really Some comes in five bangers. catches, forty-four yards for for Dewan Riggs. What is it that a Bay Area dude would have against voting them? I mean, uh, the, the other Pac-12. two in the Bay, they've gone and joined a conference completely across the other end of the country. Yeah. No, nah, when there's Mister Pac-12 though. You know, yeah. Mr. Pac-12. All right. Um, that was a big game, though. 